Good day, Brutal Plant listeners. This is Eric Peterson in Salt Lake City today, and it is my pleasure to be joined by Dale Bazio from Missing Persons. How are you today, Dale? Hey, hi, hello. Thank you very much. I'm good. Good. Hey. Where are you joining us from today? I'm in L.A. today. I live in California. Nice. Yep. Nice. Yeah. So it's weather's probably nice down there and sunny and all yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been pretty good. You know, it's been pretty good. Can't complain. No, no. Yeah. I'm (laughs) I'm curious, when was the last time you played or have you ever played in Salt Lake City before? Um, I haven't really. Okay. I I think way back in the day I did, but I haven't been there in quite a while. Well, you know, with the COVID, haven't been really anywhere for a while. But, you know, I'm back out there now, finally getting, you know, getting some shows together and I'm, you know, I play, I play, I play a lot of concerts actually. Okay. I just didn't know if you remembered any stories from way back when, when you were playing and you happened to stop through Salt Lake. So. Oh, well, I'm sorry. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> it's, yeah. Sometimes it's, it's, you know, Salt Lake city can be one of those places you don't remember, but it's got beautiful mountains here. And so. Oh, I love it there. Yeah, of course. I mean, I've traveled pretty much through the United States and Europe, you know, with Missing Persons and Frank Zappa. Yeah. Um, Did quite a bit of traveling over the years, you know. Yeah. Uh, It it, it seems that the the music business really changed. Yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, you know, it did. I guess a lot of things changed. Yeah. Um, But we'll have to just re, you know, revamp and uh, get on with it. So let's let's talk about your new book you've just released called Life is So Strange, Missing Persons, Frank Zappa, Prince and Beyond. What inspired you to write the book? Um, actually, it was the day that uh, Prince passed away. I, I, I sat up and thought, well, now I can really uh, voice my opinion. I, I hadn't thought about writing a book until then, actually, but, but he sort of spooked me. And I talk a lot about Frank Zappa. There's, there's a thread through the whole book about Frank because without Frank, I wouldn't be in the music business. Yeah. As I did do Joe's Garage with him to begin with, you know. Yeah. So, and, and um, I had a great relationship with Prince. It was it was really, really wonderful uh, until he got mad at me. And then it seems as if he does that with people. <laughs> yeah. Or he did that with people. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I, I learned a lot from him. We, we did have a, a wonderful relationship. It was it was pr- pretty um, ethereal. You know, he was a, he was a kind of an awkward guy. I know the world loved him, and I uh, wouldn't want to jo- jolt that in any way. Yeah. He, he was very different, though. He, he was not your regular Joe. So what, what got you into the Prince world? Well, I was um, kind of wrapping up the Missing Persons Project, and uh, I went I went to this disco, and I uh, started standing over on the side with the two bodyguards, so I walked up to him, and I poked him on the nose and asked him to dance. And he said, what are you doing? You just poked me on the nose. <laughs> I said, yeah, I did. I did get your attention. So I poked you on the nose. <laughs> He, he said, what do you want? <laughs> I said, I want to dance. <laughs> so we turned around and went to the dance floor. And <laughs> we became friends right then and there. Nice. And we danced. And uh, we, we went on. And, and um, yeah, and, and we actually got rather passionate at a few events. And... He finally said to me, why don't you marry me? And I said, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't like that much. But um, he said, okay, well, whatever it is, what do you want? Anything you want, I'll give it to you. So I said I wanted to be number one on the radio. I mean, how how silly. I surely wouldn't say that now. But <laughs> yeah. I did then. And he said, I can do that. I can do that. So... I um, I believed him. I went in. I made the record. Um, 
he wrote a song for me called uh, uh, So Strong, really beautiful song. And I really didn't know he wrote it about me until he passed away. When I listened to it again, I went, oh, wow, he was writing that about me. I had no idea. And um, I wrote a song called Simon, Simon. I wrote it about him, but I never told him. So we, I guess, I guess we had some secrets, yeah, um, between us and without ourselves. But, but uh, yeah, we we did a lot of um, soul search together. Lots of talking. He played, he played the piano for me for hours, and uh, I got to know him pretty well. That's He's that's a, a fragile guy. Yeah, that's a that's a great story, and it's it's. A very interesting way to introduce yourself to somebody. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah. So I'm curious. I, I mean, we all, most of us know you. You got your start with Frank Zappa. And um, during the, but I'm curious, during that time with Frank, you were, were you introduced to some of the others that got help from Frank too? Like I know Alice Cooper was a few years before you. But people like Steve Vai got help from him similarly. I'm just wondering if you ran into some of, you know, who you ran into because of Frank. Uh, well, you know, I, I actually, I, I did get to meet Steve. He's a wonderful fella. And, but uh, ultimately I ended up with Terry Bozio, who yeah. was Frank's, Patrick O'Hearn, who was Frank's, yeah. and Warren Lulo, who, who was Frank's. So I think I really hit the number. <laughs> um, Frank, gave me, Frank gave me a lot of goodness, and he was my dear friend. I made Frank laugh. That was the thing. The key to our friendship was laughter. And I made Frank laugh the day I met him. I climbed up the fire escape at the Orpheum Theater in Boston, climbed in the bathroom window, opened, uh, and I opened the door, and there was Frank. And he said, I I, I a lot of, yeah, a lot of a lot of people came through my um, door. <laughs> uh, I had a lot of love relationships with different fine fellows, but they didn't really seem to work out for me. Yeah, yeah. So it's all good. I'm single, and I like it, and I'm independent, so it's all good for me. So did you? I mean, I'm just curious. You you met a lot of good people, and you were involved with a lot of them. Um, of course, like with Prince, you collaborated with him. Were there any others that you collaborated with that you were involved with? Mm, no, no, no great musicians. Okay. No, not, no, not like Prince. Okay. Um, um, not really. No, uh, I didn't really uh, frolic with musicians uh, to make music because I was always with Terry and Warren yeah. and pretty tight. You know, and at the time when we put missing persons together, I was only uh, 20, whatever, you know, 24, 5, 23 years old. Yeah. I was 24, you know, so um, that that first 10 years of my life with missing persons is, is pretty solid. Yeah. So I, I, I was watching, um, I, I was 
I was gr- when I was growing up in California, my my whole goal in life was to go to US Festival. I never made it to US Festival, but when you guys started making music, you became very successful, and then you guys got invited to play to the US Festival. Um, you played, yeah. You guys played alongside with some amazing bands. I mean, people. I don't think people realize the magnitude of who was involved in the US Festival. I mean. Back then, it was Quarter Flash, Berlin, U2, Pretenders, Joe Walsh, Stevie Nicks, David Bowie, you guys, and and you know, and that was just one day. Um, U2. Oh, that was two days? U2 was good. Okay. U2 was good. Yeah. Yeah, my day, was, uh, my day was pretty heavy. It was David Bowie day. Yeah. So what can you tell I me? Did, what can you tell us about? Well, I tell you the, uh, the Elk Festival? Yeah, I mean, did you have any interactions with any of the other performers? Well, it was pretty tight back then, and it was pretty hard to get to anybody because there were so many people, so many places. And um, I got to meet uh, Lindsey Buckingham. Nice. But they threw us off the stage for David Bowie. <laughs> they wouldn't let us watch David. So really? we ended up leaving. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was the only one he wouldn't let us on stage. So, but I did see Stevie Nicks. Uh, she was awesome, and it was just an amazing uh, day. It, it 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 was a sea of people, and it was just an incredible experience. I I, I told Terry and Warren it was all downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I that mean, was a million people, you know. That's that's a pretty high bar right there. Yeah, absolutely. There, there, there was only there was only one way to go from there down. Yeah, I, <laughs> it was well, heavy. Yeah. So I I just recently watched some of the video performance from you guys of of that day, and it was interesting because they showed some of the crowd, and there was one single guy out there wearing a mask. A mask <laughs> jumping around. I saw. You know, with a tank. Yeah, he was he was ahead of his time, wasn't he? I know. I was just like, how would he know? I mean, that I'm watching this now in 2022, and that this was going to be the proper attire for the last two years. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that was hysterical. I know that was the funniest. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty amazing. There were so many people there. It was hard to see that it were people. It looked like an ocean. Yeah. Yeah. So my other question for you that I've always I've always been curious about is I'm sure you get asked this a lot, but what was the inspiration for the famous brassiere you wore? Oh well, you know, I'm only I was only eighty eight pounds, yeah. five two, very small, very small person. And um so I I used to think that I had to make something unique for myself that no one else would wear. Yeah. And I'd get so hard on the stage. It's got, you really, really, yeah. You build, you build up a lot of heat. Yeah. So I thought, okay, and you got to wear something like a bathing suit almost kind of vibe. Yeah. And I thought, okay, well, let's pick something that's so no one else would ever wear. So I said, okay, let's, let's pick plastic. <laughs> huh. uh, it's kind of odd, I know, but... You know, I, I, my, me and my friend Doug Powell, we used to sit on the floor, take things off the walls, posters and plastic, put, uh, tape them together with plastic and drill holes and coconuts and all kinds of things. Yeah, I was like an arts and crafts. So, <laughs> so what was, so what was, what was it actually that you used? It was a uh, plexiglass. Moss growers from the plexiglass store. Oh, and I okay. had to drill holes. I drilled holes in them and tied them together with tubing, and then I cut other pieces of plexiglass. With uh, you know, I'd have to get the right plexiglass bits for the drill. Yeah, and all this stuff. But, yeah, but I like doing things like that. You know, building houses. And stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's a form of artistic and impre- you know, you just expression, and you and that's part of it. Yeah, yeah. But back to what you said about it being so hot on stage, I it makes me wonder how these people, especially some of these these like metal guys that get out on stage and they're wearing leather 
And how how the hell do they function? Yeah. Well, we you know we 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 kind of like uh, you don't really know what's happening at the moment, right? Yeah. You know, it, it's it's like your endorphins kick in on stage, and and it, 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 you don't really realize it. And I think the leather goods are the way to go. They absorb the, the sweat, and you're still looking good. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> that 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 makes sense now. Yeah, it's vain. It's vain. We all are. We're all vain. Yeah. That's how we got in the music business. Yeah. So to, you gotta love it. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Uh, other than being an author today, what what kind of things inspire you? Are you still making music and performing and stuff? Oh yeah, I'm on the road all the time, playing constantly with the uh, '80s bands and all kind. Oh uh, yeah, I'm, I'm always on the road. I'm playing. Uh, Saturday night in Palm Springs at the uh, 420 Bank, and I am uh, I'm I'm venturing in making a movie with um, my friend Howie Hubbleman, and I'm doing a lot of work. I'm I'm doing a lot of different things. I'm not stopped, you know. I'm yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. I'm I, I'm just hoping that 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 everything settles down outside so we can get busy. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I'm curious as as to what as far as the music business goes right now. Is there anybody talent wise that you see and you go, "Wow, that I really like that." I'm just curious as to what what you Dale likes musically nowadays. Huh, that's a hard question for me because I'm old school. I like really like the dramatics and Tavares. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not really of this of this normal nature. Yeah. Um, personally, I don't know. I, I I find that it's really lost its roots. Yeah, it's so electronic. Uh, I can make it in my living room. Yeah. Um, I really don't don't prefer to do that. But um, I did make a new record. It's called Dreaming. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of songs on it that I like and yeah. I wanted to perform. You know. So I did that, but um, the music today, I, I can't, I can't say it. I'm being honest with you. I, I'm not really the person that listens to the radio. I don't really listen to any kind of music unless it's some kind of song I want to hear. I'm usually not listening to music. I listen to the news. I'm really interested in the news and all around the world and what's going on yeah. and uh, things of that nature. Most likely, I'm reading more than listening these days. Oh, interesting, interesting. I, is part of that because of just not your interest in the music, or that you've been in it for so long, you're kind of over it? You know, I I never listened to music um, except for on, on the East Coast in Boston, and I love to dance. So yeah. I'm I'm liking disco dancing music, and oh, okay. um, I don't I don't necessarily like to sing other people's songs more you know so much. Um, it distracts me, and I like to stay in my little space. So, yeah. and I'm a news, a news buff. I love the news. When I when I said goodbye to Frank, Frank said to me, "Okay, when you're sick of singing." You will be a news reporter. That is literally what he said. To wow. Me. I, I, I rarely repeat that, but that is what he said. I used to keep Frank totally, well, of course, he watched CNN. He did himself. He was a news buff. But he, I, I would always tell him what was going on. Oh, ah, okay. <laughs> He'd be the first one to know uh, about the news. I'm just curious about things that go on in all kinds of parts of different parts of the world. It, um, and now with the information on the internet, which I didn't have growing up in the 50s, it, it, it really has my curiosity to see how other people live. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's been, it's been a, a few years since you started in the music business and things have changed over the years. Are there some things that you think as an accomplished um, musician that you would tell people to help them, you know, get what they, what they want to achieve in the music business. Do you think there's 
Do you think there's still transitions between then and now that you can make to people to say some advice that's timeless, I guess? Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a, you know, a magical question right there. Um, really for <laughs> to, uh, almost kind of like how to be successful in the music business. Yeah. It's a big, it's yeah, definitely a big change. And I, I find that now the, uh, I don't know, you know, they're not coming from the raw basics. We're coming from technology. So, yeah, it's going to be different. Yeah. Um, I think you get your foot in the door already without even talking about it. Yeah. Just because it's so electronic and that that's the kind of the thing that I don't really, I don't know. You know, it's it's the way of the world. I don't, I don't, I, I'm not a, a, a genius on the computer, so... But that doesn't work for me. I yeah. mean, you know, there's lots of people that can, that can uh, turn those knobs for you. Yeah. So that's all good. But I think the uh, basics of music uh, was really wanting to perform and uh, not about the money back in the old day. Sure, we all get paid. Believe me, we get paid. But I I believe it was uh, the, 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 the kind of the, the, the fame that really fed everybody's fire. Oh, okay. um, it seemed, you know, it, it just seemed that, that everybody wanted to be noticed. Yeah. And that's how, I, how I wrote, uh, noticeable ones because I, I, I think that about everybody, I think it's innate in everybody. Really. Everybody wants to be noticed. They want to be loved. They want yeah. to be appreciated. So they can only think of one thing. Let's get famous. And then we can even get paid. Yeah. I don't know. You yeah. know, I don't know. Everything changes every day, all day long, you know, but we've got to keep up with it. We got to keep up with it. We got to keep up with everything that's going on. Have some faith and courage and, and, and just do it, you know, just do it. Whatever it is, we, we have to just try. I mean, I, there's no giving up. So, you know, I don't want to have that kind of attitude and whatever it is, you know, the diseases, the conquering of all the things we have to, take care of and, and make it a better world and make it a little bit easier on the people that, that, that can't, can't kind of make it by as, as, as some do. And that's what kind of bothers me is that society is breaking down and it will continue to break down until they give. It's, it's not about a 32, do- a 32 million dollar mansion. I guarantee you that. Yeah. And it's sure not- you're not going to eat that Lamborghini for lunch. No, exactly. So I, I don't, I don't have those ideals. Money never made the grades for me anyway. Um, that wasn't the goal I had in mind. I was really, I was really trying to, I was really trying to be creative. Really, I'm, I'm always liking a project. Yeah, <laughs> something to accomplish. You know, and, and then when I was 21 years old, after I made Joe's Garage with Frank, being in L.A. for only six months, I had a tragic accident, and I fell 40 feet out of a window. Ah. I was 21. Yeah, and when I woke up, I was 22. So it was a big deal for me. I had to sew myself back up like Raggedy Ann. I put my head open, 62 stitches, broke my kneecap, uh, broke my floating ribs. I was really a wreck. And I was only 22 when I said, Oh, I'm not doing this. And yeah. I, 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 I made myself everything which way possible fight to survive and, and break through that really tragic accident that I had. And I did. And I did. And I, I'm here to talk about it. And, and, and I'm here to say also some things happened to me that I want to get to the bottom of, you know, of, of, of Fella broke in my room and told me he was going to rape and kill me. And I said, you're talking to the wrong girl, babe. Pick the wrong room. Wow. And uh, that, was in, that was at the Holiday Inn in room 421. And I, he fought with me all the way to the window till I pulled away from his grasp around my neck. And I fell 40 feet on my head. And I had to really fight to save my life. And I don't know who that person was. He'd never even worked for the hotel and they, they, they didn't know who he was, and he just escaped. Wow. And I have a big picture of him in my mind, and I know exactly what he looks like, and I've been looking for him since 1976, since I fell, since I saw him that day. He caused me a lot of grief and anger. Yeah. I forgive him. Yeah. I forgive him. 
but I would want to tell him. He thinks I died. He ran to the window and he looked out and he said, oh no, she's dead, to my cousin who was standing behind him. And little did he know I lived and I'm here and he disappeared. So I don't know. I don't know. There's things that go on in life that sometimes you have to take a deep breath and take it all in and say, okay, what do you think? What do you feel? Because it's only really up to you. It has nothing to do with the rest of the world and whether they're crumbling or not. Mm -hmm. Only what's going on in your head when you close your eyes and it's you all by yourself. Can you handle it? Can you handle it? That's it. Can your conscience handle it? And that's what you should fight for and strive for every day. Having your conscience handle the decisions you've made and be precise because I'm sure we're clouded and I'm sure we've all done some things that we regret. If you didn't, you're lying. Yeah. So I say own up, you know, own up to it all for your own sake. Yeah. And then you can carry, then you can carry on, you know, then you can go forward. I know that. I know that about myself anyway. That worked for me. And every day I just, I, you know, I hang tight and I do what I have to do on this earth to make it a better place for me, myself, and everyone else around me, and the people I love and my fellow citizens, yeah. people next door, everything I can do. The whole story I'm going to tell you, then I'll let you go. But there's a fella and he walks down the beach on the sand, the beautiful sand, and he sees all these starfish. They're, they're all swept up on the sand, and they're dying. And the starfish can't live out of water for a certain amount of time. They can't live out of water. Yeah. He picked up every starfish that he walked in front of, in front of his two feet, and he made a path for so far, for so far. He picked every starfish up, and he threw them back in the ocean of the water and gave their life back to them. Did he have to? No, he didn't, but he did. Yeah. And that's it. That's all I can say. You got to pick up the starfish and throw them back in the ocean so they can live. And stop thinking about yourself. Well, I think I think what the question I asked, you answered perfectly. I mean, you answered it perfectly. I mean, when when you talk about being yourself – and living through inspiration, that's that's what people need to do if they want to make it. It's it's your fight. It's your life. Yeah. It's your strive. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all you, babe. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. You know, I tell my sons all the time, it's all you, babe. Yeah. It's all you. Yeah. It's all your fault. It's all your responsibility. It's all your happiness. I don't get a speck of it. It's all you. Yeah. And I love that. I love that I can do that to me. I can say, Dale, it's all you, babe. It's yeah. all you. That just makes me feel so powerful and happy and full of myself enough to give it all away. And the more I give away, <laughs> the more the universe gives me back. Exactly. I, I can't lose. I can't lose. Yeah. So I wish you all well, and I wish you all to give it away. <laughs> yeah. And and you'll be happy. You'll be happy. That's all I can. That's all I think that I know. Yeah. Okay.